Hey guys, whenever I'm asked what video editing or color grading software you should get started with, I always recommend DaVinci Resolve. And you've already seen on my channel that it's pretty much all DaVinci Resolve tutorials. Now, one reason is that it's free to get started and you have a really powerful tool from the get-go that is free to use, that can do 90% of what you can do in other editing software as well. But it's just free and it's one of the most powerful tools, especially for color grading. So if you wanna get started with that, that's great as well. Now, one of the things that I don't talk about that often is these particular studio features that are in DaVinci Resolve. And I've been using the studio version for almost a year and I keep forgetting where the line is between what the studio features are and what the free features are. So if you're considering if you should upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio and if it's worth the money, first of all, I definitely think it's worth the money. But today I wanted to take a look at three of the features that I use a lot in my workflow and that's really saving my footage and my videos in a pinch when I make mistakes in camera or when I simply need to make adjustments that I couldn't avoid. So today we are taking a look at free paid features or free features in DaVinci Resolve Studio. It is the super scale feature, it's the noise reduction feature, and it is the deflicker feature. Free features that I use a lot, especially the noise reduction and the deflicker has saved me and my projects quite a few times when I couldn't go back and shoot the same clip again. It saved me and it made it possible to actually finish the project and deliver a high quality product in the end. So to take a look at all three features, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and have a look at it. All right, so we're inside DaVinci Resolve and right now we are just in the edit page because the first feature I want to talk about is Superscale. Now, I usually shoot everything in 4K, but sometimes it happens that I need to use another camera that maybe cannot shoot 4K, or sometimes it overheats if I shoot long sessions. So sometimes I need to scale it down to 1080, but if I have a project that I'm working in where I'm working in a 4K timeline, as you can see here, and I drop in a 1080p clip, as you can see, it's just taking out one half of the entire image, which is not really ideal. Now, one thing that I could do is I could go to zoom and I could say 2x, and now I get up to 2x, but I'm losing a lot of quality because I'm scaling up. I'm pretty much just zooming in on the footage itself to make it 4K instead. That's not really ideal. So what DaVinci Resolve Studio has is a feature that's called Super Scale. So if we go down to the bottom here in our expector, you open the expector up here, Go into video, we are highlighting the super scale clip here, or the particular clip that I have here, which was shot on my girlfriend Sony. And whenever we shoot in slow motion on that camera, unfortunately it doesn't have slow motion or 60 frames per second in 1080, which means that sometimes when we really want that and we need it, then we'll have to shoot it in 1080. Now, I would like to use this for a project in 4K. So what I can do is I can go to super scale here. And right now it's turned off. You can see that the default setting here is 2x enhanced. So let's try and turn it on and see what happens. Now it's pretty much just scaling up our footage to 2x, but enhanced as well. And let me just reset everything here. So we don't have anything set. Now, one thing that can happen when you scale up is that you lose some sharpness and you get some more noise. And this is actually the thing that happens in this particular clip. So with this super scale feature, we can just reduce the noise a little bit maybe around 6.6 .6 here, and then we can enhance the sharpness as well. I don't want to enhance the sharpness too much, but I can just do it a little bit. Now we have a 1080 clip in a 4K timeline, which looks pretty good. Now, it takes a lot of resource for the computer to do this, and I'm also recording my screen right now, so it's not really showing smooth playback. We could go in and say, render smart here and that should give us a render of this clip in a second and then we can see it smoothly but I can already see from just zooming in on it a little bit now that it is a lot better than what we had before it actually looks like it could be shot in 4k the only thing I've done to it otherwise is that I went into the color page before we started and I just did a little bit of color grading before we did anything else so this is not a color grading tutorial on this clip so I just went in and did my usual color grade to make it look better. And now, now that I turn that on and off, of course we have to re-render again. So let's just wait a second and then see what happens when it has rendered. And it has rendered now. 
So if we put it up in full screen, we should be able to play it back pretty smoothly, and we can. And to me, that looks like a perfectly fine 4K clip. Of course, it's not the exact same as shooting it in 4K, but it's good enough to pass through a video, especially if it's only a few clips that you're using. This is really a lifesaver in those situations. All right, so the second thing that we're looking at today is noise reduction. This is a question I've gotten quite a few times. Now, noise reduction in this case, I've already gone in and done my color grading. So this was the before and this is the after. Now, if we zoom into her arm here, we can see that there is some noise. And if I turn off and off my exposure here, we can see it's probably because I had to highlight that a little bit. But even if we go into our lock shot here, we can see that there was some noise. And that's because we were shooting inside a bathroom and there weren't a lot of light. There were only light from a little bit up here from a lamp that wasn't that good quality. So we didn't have much to work with. So my ISO is cranked up pretty high here. And now I need to try and see if I can save this clip because this noise is not looking that good. Of course, I can work with it and I could probably pass it as only a few seconds, but let's see what we can do. So what I like to do to add the noise reduction is to do it before I even do anything to my clip. So in this case, I'm using my workflow where I'm converting from log to DaVinci White Gamut and then from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. 709. You could also just have it in the end where you're going from log to Rec. 709. That's also fine. But in this case, I'm going to do a serial note before. So this will be my serial note before and I'm going to call it noise red, noise reduction. Now let's use this as our example here so we can see all the noise. Hopefully it goes through well enough on YouTube as well. But there's quite a lot of noise in the shadows here. I'm going to the motion effects tab here, which is I think only available in the full version, the studio version, or it might be available, but you cannot use it. You'll just have a, a warning on top that says that you can't use it as a paid feature. What I like to do is use the spatial noise reduction and not the temporal run. Temporal one, I find that the spatial one works a lot better. It takes account of the whole image and then tries to reduce the noise as well as possible that it can. I always go with better, as I find that works better. And the radius I'll play around with regarding to the result, but I'm always keeping it at small to begin with. And what I like to try to do is not go above 15 if I can. So if I go on to 15, you can see both the luma and chroma are being applied. And if we turn it off and on, we can see some things are happening here. You can zoom in a little bit more, but it's not a lot. So maybe we try 25 instead. And now we're losing a lot more noise. Now you can see also because we zoomed in quite a lot, you can see that it is going pretty well. It's reducing at least the majority of the noise. So now I think it's more passable as a clip. If we zoom out a bit. Can definitely see a difference here and if we zoom out all the way we can definitely see in the shadows here there's more noise and now it's gone i don't know if we are in full screen that you can actually see it but it's the same as if we zoom in here you can see that the noise is pretty much just removed so we didn't have to apply more than that the only thing you have to be careful with when you're applying the noise reduction is that the image quickly looks a little bit more soft in this case i think it's quite fine i can't really see the difference so i think it's perfectly fine to view it like this and use it like this and we're viewing it on a small screen so that's it at least in my case so that makes it a little bit more difficult but i think this passes as a good clip so if we play that back here we should have a pretty good clip that we can now work with that doesn't have any noise and if i zoom in here in my timeline you can see it doesn't look like it has any noise anymore it's still a darker clip and it's a little bit mushy but that's because we shot it in the dark and we didn't have that to work with but in terms of noise reduction, I think we are pretty set. Now, you could try and do the noise reduction in different places. You could also do it as the last thing. I like to do it as the first thing because then essentially what the noise reduction is seeing is my lock clip here. And I have a feeling that that's how it works best in terms of getting the best result and not messing up any of the color grading that I'm doing after. But I will still start as we did today with doing all my color grading before I do anything else. And then at the end, I will apply my noise reduction node up here to the clips that is necessary. Because sometimes I can also just save it with the exposure and playing around with the settings here. And I don't have to do the noise reduction itself. So that is how I go about my noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve Studio. I really enjoy this feature and it's really saved me a few times where I've gotten some really noisy clips that I just 
really didn't like, but this feature made it possible to still work through it and still use it for a client project, which this shot was actually for. And we used it in the final product and no one's ever noticed that it was a little bit noisy because I used this tool and we pretty much removed everything. Okay, so the last thing, and this is the biggest lifesaver that I've had in DaVinci Resolve is D-Flicker. And if you don't know what we're talking about here, let me just put this clip up in full screen and show you what we're talking about. This was another client project that I shot and look at the flickering here. Now this comes from some parts of the world has different Hertz in their light bulbs. And now in Europe, it is, I think 50 Hertz. I'm not an expert on the actual settings here, but I think it's 50 Hertz. And that essentially means that when I'm shooting one over 60, because I'm shooting everything in 30 frames per second, I'm trying to double my frame rate. I get this rolling shutter effect because the lights are flickering in a different frequency than my camera. So I'm getting this result, which is just absolutely horrible to look at. And I wouldn't use this in a client project. It looks too bad. I wouldn't be satisfied with putting that in. But there is, of course, that's what the video is about, a lifesaver that we can use inside DaVinci Resolve. So we can use the tool that is called Deflicker. Now, just as we did with the noise reduction, I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to call this node Deflicker. And where we find this one is in the effects tab. And we can just search up here for Deflicker. And we find the tool here and we can drag it onto our node. And then if we just drag over a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. Instead of being in time-lapse mode, what I'll do is I'll go to advanced controls. And essentially what it's looking at is using the temporal noise reduction tool, but it's looking to each side of the frames to figure out if there's a better way of doing it so it can get rid of the flickering that's happening. And let's just try and leave it at everything as, as it is now and see how it works for our clip. And just like that, the only time we can see anything. So if you look up here at the chair, we can still see there's a little bit of flickering. So what we can try and do is we can try and edit or adjust what we're doing here. So instead of looking at three frames to each side, it's looking at two frames to each side. Maybe that gives us a better result. Let's try and have a look. That looks like it's giving us a better result. There's a tiny bit of flickering up here. If we go back, you can see that's a tiny bit of flickering here, but it's almost unnoticeable and a client would not see this unless they know it's there. So as long as we don't tell them, this clip is now really passable. And if you already forgot what it looked like before, let me just turn it off and show you. This is the before and this is the after. So a huge difference in quality here. And now this clip is perfectly usable and perfectly passable in a situation. And I actually use this clip in a client project. I'm super, happy that the deflake effect worked. Now, there are some instances if you're shooting directly towards a light source and it's big and it's dark around it, it can be difficult. So it doesn't work in all situations, but in at least, I would say 80% of the situation I've used this tool and I've played around with the different settings here. Usually I just leave it at this and uh, adjust the frames to each side if I need to. Sometimes I go in and use, uh, I always keep it better, but the motion range and we can play around with different features here. But there's a few instances where it doesn't work, but for the majority I said, this is the result that we get afterwards. And it's just mind blowing to me that this can save my footage because we came home from the shoot and I forgot that the Hertz and we were shooting inside and this would be the case. And we looked at the footage and I was just, already thinking that we had a problem and I couldn't go back to shoot again. This really saved my life in this situation. So those are three tools in DaVinci Resolve Studio that I really cannot live without. Now, it's not something that I use every single day and it's something that I try my best to avoid having to use at all. But in the pinch situation where I have to shoot 1080 and I have to deliver in 4K, this is really a lifesaver, the super scale feature. In the situations where I just don't have enough light, I don't have any external lights that I can adjust, I don't have anything to play around with other than my ISO. I'm trying my best to get the exposure right with my ISO, but that just introduces some grain. The noise reduction feature is really a lifesaver there just to adjust and maybe hide at least some of the noise to get a better result. 
And then the last part, as you just saw, the deflager feature has saved my life so many times now where I've just forgotten that I'm sticking so hard to the rules of doubling my shutter speed for the frame rate. So I forget that sometimes I have to shoot one over 50 instead. This could definitely have been avoided, but in the buzzing around or going back and forth to different shoots, I simply sometimes forget. And this is really a lifesaver for those situations that I don't avoid it in camera from the beginning. So I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of these features and maybe it helped you decide if at some point along the line or maybe now the Vincent Resolve Studio is worth upgrading to. Another thing to mention is that it is a lifetime, one-time payment, lifetime thing. So compared to a lot of other editing softwares that I used to use where it's a monthly payment, within about a year for most subscriptions, it already paid back and you get as far as I understand, lifetime upgrades or updates moving forward. So it's really worth a great investment in my opinion, because there are different features and tools that just life saving sometimes. And we'll continue this series throughout some more videos and I'll talk about some more features that you can use in the Winter Resolve Studio that are really worth getting the studio version for. So I'm not telling you to go out and spend a lot of money, but I think it's worth it and I still think it's quite affordable as well. So with that said, if you have any questions about anything or any suggestions as to what you would like to see inside the Ninja Resolve Studio to help you make the decision if it's worth it or not, leave that down in the comments below. And apart from that, I'll just wish you a great day and until next time, take care.